This video is brought to you by NCIX.com. Great technology, selection, and service. Corsair. They completely stole my attention with the Strafe RGB gaming keyboard that I reviewed last year, but to complete the set, they also announced this as well. Meet the Shimitar RGB MOBA gaming mouse priced at $80. This mouse targets the MOBA and MMO markets by putting a huge number of customizable shortcut buttons right at our fingertips, and also incorporates a unique key slider mechanism that allows gamers to tailor its layout to their liking. If you recall the Vengeance M90 that was announced back in 2012, it didn't receive a huge amount of attraction but it was marketed towards MMO and RTS gamers. This time Corsair has come back with the Shimitar, which adds more functionality along with some really cool features and we are about to find out if it has what it takes to beat the competition. Diving into the build quality and design, the Shimitar looks relatively simple compared to other mobile mice, but there are some highlights here. The added yellow plastic frame on the left side looks great, and for those who don't feel such a loud color fitting their style, a standard black version is also available. Corsair originally introduced this color scheme with their Void headsets for visual aesthetics, but it doesn't appeal to everyone. This is a huge and heavy mouse weighing at about 150 grams that's sadly not customizable due to the aluminum piece that's built inside the mouse's centerline. With that being said, that aluminum reinforcement surprisingly does a good job keeping up the weight balance and giving the Shimitar a solid feel. The outer shell is coated with a soft touch rubber surface that was very comfortable to use, although just like any mouse that comes with this coating, it starts to wear off over time. The size of the Shimitar is something to take into account since users with small hands may find it challenging to wrap their palms around the body. I didn't have any issues since my palms are large, but keep that in mind. As for grips, you'll find one on the right side that is perfectly placed for your ring and pinky fingers, while on the left side there are two sets of side buttons, three each, that come with a texture which does a pretty good job of holding your thumb. What you won't find is a thumb rest since Corsair figures your thumb will be using the shortcut buttons. The high curve design on the Shemitar's top did support my palms really well, but it might get sweaty during those intensive gaming sessions. There's no room for air to pass through since the palm touches the surface the whole time. I'm not sure if this is just me, but let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. Corsair packed a whopping 12,000 DPI optical sensor into the Shimitar, and honestly, I wonder who would ever take advantage of this setting. Unless if you have multiple high resolution screens right in front of you that you would want to quickly navigate into. Personally, I think it's a marketing gimmick, but anyway, the performance is nonetheless stunning. I tend to prefer optical gaming mice for both editing and gaming. Accuracy was on point with no lag, which complemented my aiming and really boosted responsiveness. I used an aluminum mouse pad for testing the Shimitar, which allowed the sensor to shine and resulted in excellent tracking plus smooth movement. There are a total of 17 programmable buttons on the Shimitar. This includes the primary left and right click buttons, the scroll wheel button, two D-pad shift buttons right behind the scroll wheel, and last, the 12 buttons on the left side of the mouse. Now an interesting feature on this mouse is the key slider. Basically, if you're having any trouble reaching any of the left side buttons, you can adjust the whole set a little backwards or forwards and then tighten it into place with the included hex screwdriver on the bottom of the mouse. It's a nice feature and I had it placed all the way in the front uh, since my thumbs were perfectly fine reaching all the buttons. The primary left and right click buttons have a nice tactile response to them. This follows along with the DPI shift buttons and the scroll wheel button, which indeed requires a lot of pressure to press, but the scroll steps are nicely defined. The 12 side buttons have great feedback as well, although they do feel mushy when a button is pressed. Moving into lighting, the Shimitar has four lighting zones. The subtle lighting on the scroll wheel, the logo at the back, the 12 MMO buttons on the side, and the lighting at the front. All of these zones are RGB, meaning you can customize them to any color of your choice. Corsair has once again surprised me in this department. The lighting transitions are so smooth with no latency, so it really blends in perfectly with the Strafe RGB if you happen to pick that up as well. Each zone can be customized to a different effect, or one single effect can be applied to all four zones. There are four effects in total, uh, rainbow, solid color, color shift, and color pulse. Corsair's Q Engine software is pretty straightforward. You are greeted with the Assignments tab where you can program or remap all the 17 buttons to your preference. 
The lighting tab lets you customize the lighting effects of each zones as discussed earlier. And as you can see, they're very well organized. Kudos, Corsair. The performance in DPI tab allows you to adjust the five different steps of DPI sensitivity, the pointer speed, uh, enable or disable angle snapping, and adjust the liftoff distance. All these settings will be stored inside the microprocessor built inside the Shimitar. Okay, there are a few things I need to establish with the Shimitar. I have a lot of mixed feelings with the mouse, like the soft touch rubber coating on the shell is so comfortable, yet it will wear out over time. The high curve design on the top part of the mouse is an excellent support for your palms, but there is no gap for air movement and that will eventually lead to sweaty palms. The optical sensor is excellent for gaming, although I don't think the 12,000 DPI marketing strategy might help with their sales because I was perfectly comfortable with my 800 to 1600 DPI setting. The 12 side buttons are nice and tactile, plus all of them are in reach for your thumb with the key slider being an excellent feature. The lighting is also excellent and it blends in perfectly within your setup. It's more than obvious the Corsair Shimitar focuses in on a narrow yet quickly growing segment of the gaming peripheral market. This thing is laser targeted at MOBA and MMO players. In that respect, it does quite well, though there's a steep learning curve when it comes to successfully interacting with all those buttons, particularly when the in-game action becomes frantic. Over time, you will get a hang of it and Corsair's excellent Q software will be there holding your hand. While gamers who prefer the first-person shooter genre will surely find its primary feature, all those shortcut buttons, to be a needless add-on, there are those who will benefit from it. This is actually one of the first MMO-centric mice we reviewed, so the jury is still out regarding how well the Shimitar fares against its direct competition. So what do you guys think of the Shimitar from Corsair? Is it something that you would consider? Let us know in the comments down below. I'm Eber with Hardware Canucks. Don't forget to subscribe for more similar content, and we'll see you in the next one.